Tyson Fury. I'm going to be short, sweet, and simple. This fight right here, you better be preparing. You better train your, your butt off as if your life depends on it. Because your life depends on it. Don't go up missing. <laughs> that was Deontay Wilder responding to Tyson Fury. As you all heard, Wilder's last message to Tyson Fury is, Don't be a no-show. Do not go missing again. We already know what time it is when it comes to Tyson Fury rap sheet. There's a very high probability that Tyson Fury would not show up fight night without his magic gloves. As you all see above, this is Tyson Fury latest footage of him training. Ever since he's been isolated from May to now, preparing for Deontay Wilder. So hopefully Tyson Fury doesn't fake an injury like he faked COVID, then has to pay Deontay Wilder $80 million along with losing his payday that he was going to make fighting Wilder. We shall see. Furthermore, brand new footage came out of Deontay Wilder sparring Robert Hellenius in preparation for the Tyson Fury trilogy. Obviously, these are just photos. However, just by looking at the photos, you can clearly see Deontay Wilder have been practicing the drills he's been working on, like that devastating right hand to the body. That's not something he's just been drilling. That's something Deontay Wilder have been implementing during sparring. And that's exactly how you chop the tree down. Wilder have to keep in mind, once you chop the body, the head will follow. And the second thing Wilder must not forget to do is once he hurts Tyson Fury, he cannot abandon the body where he only goes head hunting. He must go to the body because the body will open the headshots even more in order to set up that one hit a quitter. The feints and the variation of jabs, including the body attacks, are the keys to setting up that one hit a quitter. With them keys, Deontay Wilder is like a locksmith. In other words, those are his keys to success. Previously, when Wilder fought Tyson Fury, Fury was able to take away Deontay Wilder's right hand away at his zombie stage by circling to his right while stepping back with his lead hand extended. By doing so, Tyson Fury was able to deflect Deontay Wilder's right hand every time he threw it. Now for Wilder, that's an easy fix. That's a simple adjustment. Instead of throwing the right hand upstairs, Wilder needed to throw it downstairs where Tyson Fury entire body is open and vulnerable for a right hand or a left hook to the body, which eventually would have opened up the right hand upstairs since Tyson Fury wouldn't have been able to keep making that move without getting paid. Also, before unleashing the right hand, Wilder lead foot needs to be in the inside of Tyson Fury lead foot. Wilder also needs to circle his own left in order to put himself in the right position to unleash the right hand. Positioning is everything in the sport of boxing, which again, this is what Deontay Wilder is working on this time around. And without Tyson Fury tampered gloves, he's officially in trouble. All of his head movement is not going to save him because the body is there either for a counter or to lead and break the tree down. However, it's important to note that it's always best to counter to the body when you're dealing with a moving target or a fighter that moves his head a lot, which that's what Tyson Fury does. And we all know all of that head movement could get taken away with a feint, a jab, a variation of offense, so on and so forth, which I truly believe Deontay Wilder will be bringing all of that to the table. And we all know Tyson Fury is not going to be able to bring his magical tampered gloves to the table this time around. With that being stated, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below and click on the notification bell. I'm going to leave you guys with what Wilder had to say on sparring on the PBC podcast. You talked about the new Deontay Wilder. We've seen some of the pad work, the weightlifting, the, the shadow boxing. We haven't seen the sparring, though. Um, and I think that's one question a lot of people have is how is all the work you put in with Malik translated to, to sparring? Is there anything you, you can share with us? Well, you know, no, you know, sparring has been amazing. Uh, <laughs> I'll put it like this without giving out too much. Man, 
<laughs> Let me see how. <laughs> Sparrings have been great, man. I don't, you know, I can't say names, but just know it's been a lot of drops. It's been a lot of people on the canvas. Okay. I'll put it like that. Mm. There's been a lot of people on the canvas, and I made a lot of believers. You know, one thing about it, I love getting new faces that come in because when the new faces come in, they only know of what they've heard of you and what, you know, the world put out of you, you know, and I, everybody always try to put me out in a bad light and, and all this because I'm so mo I'm confident in what I can do. I'm confident in myself, you know, and, you know, a lot of people take it as being cocky and everything. No, you got to believe in yourself. You got to be confident in yourself, especially in a sport like boxing, where you got another guy that's trying to take your head off. This is a life or death sport. And I don't, care what nobody say man is 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 nothing safe about boxing even a doctor would tell you that the, the, the one of the top doctors in the world would tell you nothing is safe about getting getting hit in the head you know what i'm saying yeah. for 12 rounds nothing because for one the, the head is not designed to be hit in the first place your brain is not meant to be shooken up right. like that and you getting punched like that is nothing cool about it but at the same time, we signed up for this. I love boxing. I love it because I signed up for it. So with that being said, I know the dangers of it, and I know the repercussions and the consequences that come behind it if you don't apply the right things to it. So that's why my body has gotten right. You know, <laughs> my mind is right. We're doing all the right things, man. And uh, I think the world is going to see a, a different me, you know, it ain't the things, it ain't so much of what Malik has taught me. It's just so much of what he has, what I've already known that he's brought out of me. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, when they see me, they're going to be like, oh, Malik taught him this. And Malik will tell you itself. He's like, it ain't nothing I taught, bro. It's just what I've, what I've been able to bring out of him that my previous trainers couldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Because with, the, with, with, with you know with Malik, he bring he can bring the best out of me. The things that I know how to do, he just bring it out even more and just applying it to sparring, just applying it to certain things. Because a lot of people always say, well, you can, anyone can look good on mitts. That's false. Everybody can't look good on mitts. You have to be able to do a certain thing. You have to be able, be able to have mm -hmm. a certain stamina, a certain skill. You have to be able to be coordinated. You know what I'm saying? To be able to hit the mitts and stuff like that. Every, I haven't seen pe many people hit the mitts, and I tell you, some people you can be like, you can just give up boxing right now <laughs> the way you're looking with these mitts. So, you know, that's not true, you know. So we work very hard. You know, a lot of people going to discredit and a lot of people going to give credit. But we don't worry about the naysayers. I'm all about peace. I'm all about love. Of course, I have to be so – I have to speak violent. I have to have a violent mindset within the business that I'm in. But outside of this business, I'm one of the best guy a person will ever want to know. 